Ready to break up with your bullshit? I mean, all those excuses that are keeping you stuck. Because you have one life to live. And if you're not having fun yet, then that's a problem, dude. Welcome to Goals, Grit, and Some Woo Woo Shit. The podcast where you learn about the habits of kicking ass at life. Whether you want to get ripped, get rich, or just get high on life, this is the place to be. Here's your host, best-selling author and feel-good expert, Una Duncan. Hey, welcome to the show. Today, it's just me, and we are going to talk about the goal of staying fit during the holiday season. So here's the normal story. The holiday season takes a toll on your health. It is a vortex of parties and booze and stress and family and way too much cheese and chocolate, and everyone just falls into this like black hole of chocolate liqueur, and then we collectively emerge in the new year with very uncomfortable pants. During this episode, I am going to help you reframe that mindset by pointing out that you are in control and you can make the holidays whatever the fuck you want them to be. I am going to convince you that they can be good for your health and your fitness goals. Then I'm going to give you some practical tips so that you can make this holiday season the one that you emerge in the new year feeling like a freaking goddess or god or whatever. Basically, we're going to have fun, fun, fun until your daddy takes the Costco sized box of turtles away. So let's talk mindset. I'm releasing this at the end of November 2023. And no matter what your yearly pattern has been around the holidays, I'm inviting you to rethink your upcoming holiday season and what it can mean for your health. But listen, no matter when you're listening to this, it's never the wrong time to break a pattern that's not serving you. You always have the power to make a different choice as soon as you become conscious that you are doing something that is not in alignment with who you want to be. You could be listening to this on December 26th and thinking like, oh, I overdid it this season. Oh, I can't wait till January to get back on track. Don't wait until January. Don't wait until Monday. Don't even wait until the end of the meal that you are eating right now that you are finished with. Let's say you're at the movies and you went for the popcorn and it's halfway through the popcorn. You're thinking like, oh, this is kind of starting to make me feel a bit gross. You can decide then and there you are done with the popcorn. Even if you already decided that you're allowed to eat that popcorn, even if you already put it in your calorie tracker, even if you always have popcorn at the movies and you always finish it, you made a conscious decision to buy the popcorn, stay conscious in the eating of it. Each bite can be a choice. And hopefully a delicious one. Dude, you will enjoy it so much more when you stay present to what you were actually doing. When I lead my goal setting workshop, which by the way, if you haven't done it, you need to. I have people who come back year after year just to do this process with me. But one of the most important things is that the moment you make a goal, you make a decision that you want something to happen, you need to take a 10 minute action. Any action that starts some momentum towards your goals. So if you've got a financial goal, that might be like emailing your friend for their financial advisor. If you've got a relationship goal, it is booking the time in your calendar to have date nights. If it's a fitness goal, maybe it's signing up for the program. It's uh, making a grocery list. You just do it immediately as soon as you make the goal. So my point is, no matter when you are listening to this, that you can decide that this right now is the moment that is the start of a new era. And right now I'm getting flashbacks to my mom dropping me off at grade school in grade two. And (laughs) I'm getting out of the like wood paneled station wagon. And she's saying, today is the first day of the rest of your life. So I'm saying that to you, beautiful listener. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. And don't you dare wait until Monday or January to make changes that are going to make you feel good. And to be clear, this is up to you. Um, I always hear people say, Oh, I always gain weight around the holidays because there's just so much food. But here's the deal, dude. Food does not make you gain weight. You choosing to eat too much food makes you gain weight. I don't care what kind of Italian grandmother you have. No one is forcing you to overeat. No one is forcing you to binge drink. Unless you're spending your Christmases at Carlos and Charlie's in Cancun. And if that's the case, there's nothing I can do to save you. My point is... Don't go into the holidays with this victim mindset about your health and fitness. So this year, let's create a new story. Like the holidays are when I feel like my best because the holidays can actually be really good for your health and fitness. Here's why. One, when your routine is disrupted, 
you can invent a whole new you. So um, a little while ago, but a month ago, I went on a proper vacation. I went on a 10-day cruise from Vancouver to Hawaii, and we were mostly at sea. And you know how they say, I don't know if you know this, but on cruises, they're always like, upgrade to the premium Wi-Fi package and you'll be able to stream like home. Oh my God, it's a freaking lie. And I am so glad that it was a lie because it was probably the first time in 10 years that I had truly unplugged from my business. And I am not saying that in a like, poor me, I'm so overworked kind of way at all. It's actually because I'm so fortunate. I love my clients and I can do my job from anywhere in the world. So I do. I travel a lot and I bring my job. And usually when I travel, it's not like I'm like pushing projects through, but I'm just like checking my email, dropping into my groups, making sure there's no fires, everyone's happy. And I honestly get such a hit from seeing my clients kick ass that it always has felt like nothing but fun and totally easy to check in on them while I'm traveling. But here's the thing. When you are constantly checking on your stuff, you are constantly dropping back into that version of yourself that created that stuff, that manages that stuff. The people you're communicating with are constantly reflecting back to you a specific version of yourself that they're used to. When you take some space, it gives you a chance to explore other possibilities to explore a version of you that's maybe more expansive, that's uh, more updated. Maybe it's more authentic to who you want to be right now. And by the way, this feels like a very obvious moment to plug my upcoming retreat. Dudes, we are going to Spain at the end of May 2024. So if you want to jump out of your life and come back to it like a different version of you that's like healthier and happier, that is exactly what's going to happen there. I'll put the link in the show notes or DM me if you have any questions about that. But back to the holidays. One of the reasons that the holidays can feel so overwhelming is because all of your healthy routines get totally kiboshed. Kids are home from school, you're traveling, there's some freaking psychos planning parties on weeknights and expecting you to stay up past 9 p.m. It is my hope that in your normal life, you've probably established like a healthy habit loop or two. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, when I say habit loops, check out my book. It's called Healthy as Fuck. It, it's probably still even free on Audible. Anyway, your habit loops might look something like this. You might have um, trigger, it's 6 a.m. Behavior, I do my yoga. Reward, I have my smoothie and I check in with my accountability group. You probably have routines that you've got on autopilot and you don't even need to think about them right now. It's like a non-negotiable that has served you so well and it makes you feel great. And if that's true, by the way, oh my gosh, congratulations, you are fucking awesome. And then... Along comes the holidays, and your new home is the pull-out couch at your sister-in-law's. Or maybe you're hosting like eight grandchildren who need pancakes at 5 a.m. Or someone at work is doing a cookie exchange, and you know, you've been kind of avoiding sugar, but there's something about raw cookie dough that like collapses your entire sense of self. In short, the holidays start messing with your habits. Well, let me point out the opportunity in that. Healthy habits are awesome. Because once established, they take some work to establish, but once you've established them, they require no brain power. Like that is the beautiful gift of habits. You just do them automatically. They're who you are. No big whoop. No big whoop until you start to see the results of doing these things consistently. And then you're like, oh, whoop. It's great. And here's what's great about disrupting them. It's a chance to go off autopilot and actually choose your actions with intention. So I'll give you an example. In my normal life, I have a smoothie for breakfast. I've probably done this for about 10 years. I do not think about this. When I was on that cruise, I didn't have the option for a smoothie. So every morning, I had to think about it. I was like, what does my body want for breakfast? What would feel good? And it might be your habit, for example, to go for a run before work. But when you consciously choose to go for a run on Christmas morning before you spike your coffee with Baileys, that is a serious win. And it's going to make you a lot more tolerant of your family for the rest of the day. The, the run, I mean, not the Baileys. The point is, when you go off autopilot, when you get out of your normal routine for a bit, it gives you a chance to tune in and to refine what's actually going to make you feel good right now, which is, of course, the whole point. Okay. Reason number two that the holidays can be great for your fitness habits is that it is a time to enlist social support. 
So one of the biggest predictors of lifetime adherence to healthy habits is family and social support. I'm sure you've heard this a million times. And this is so strong that people who participate in group exercise programs are six times more likely to stick with their exercise program and therefore achieve their goals. So chances are that during the holidays, you are going to be spending some extra time with the people closest to you. And this is your chance to enlist their support and to reinforce your identity as a fit person. You can do stuff like request and supply healthier options to the normal holiday food. You can ask for and give fitness related gifts. And by the way, I have an awesome list of fitness gift ideas. I will link that in the show notes as well. You can suggest that your family does a post-dinner dance party. My family and I, we just go to YouTube. We Google Just Dance, Uptown Funk or whatever song everyone's going to like. And then we do the Just Dance uh, video game as if it's like a video game, but it's not just a video. It works great. Okay. Um, You can suggest that everybody goes for a morning hike after opening presents. Now, I know you might be thinking, okay, (laughs) Una, you don't get it. My mom is like Patsy from Absolutely Fabulous. My husband is like Stanley from The Office. And my son is like the comic book guy from The Simpsons. No one is going to bite on that hike thing. That might be true. So this is your opportunity to lead by example. And even if your actions have like zero influence on the people around you, which by the way, I bet you were underestimating, this is your chance to be out and proud about who you are. So a couple of years ago, my client Rebecca was kind of nervous because she was going to stay at her in-laws house for Christmas. And she thought it would be embarrassing to do her workout video in their living room. She's kind of a new exerciser. She's kind of shy about it. That's totally understandable, right? But she did it anyway, which is fucking badass. And the next year when she showed up, they had like created some space for her and there was new people there. And her in-laws said, oh, that's just what Rebecca does. She's one of those fitness people. Now, can you imagine what it would mean for your self-perception when the people around you and your family reflect back to you that they see you as a fitness person, when they expect you to work out every day. And when you have that identity and when it's reinforced like that, that's when the habits start happening automatically. And then that's when the results happen. Okay. The third way that the holidays can be good for your health is the cheese. And no, I'm not talking about double cream brie. I mean like the Christmas spirit cheese. (laughs) It is possible that your family celebrates kind of a secular holiday season. It's maybe in your family, maybe it's less about baby Jesus and a little bit more about like Uncle Eddie's turtleneck in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. But you'd have to be a total Grinch if you didn't at least have a moment during the season when you're kind of moved to pause and reflect on your good fortune maybe make a little wish for world peace. And if that sentiment carries out to maybe participating in your local faith community or volunteering with your local food bank, there is so much to indicate. That's really good for your health, dude. And let me tell you something. Some of the biggest leaps forward I have had with my fitness or with my business were moments when I actually realized this does not freaking matter that much. When I realized that the problem that I had been like mind fucking all day and night was actually not that much of a problem. Do you think it's likely that you would volunteer at a soup kitchen for the homeless people in December and then go home and freak out because you'd gain some holiday fluff? And I am not saying that to like first world guilt you at all. Everybody has their problems. Everyone's problems are real to them. But when you take some time out over the holidays to reflect on gratitude, to connect with people you love so much, and maybe be of service to people who aren't as fortunate. It might give you some perspective and it might silence some of that mind chatter that's just not serving you. And as a reminder, all of that self-judgment and food guilt and whatever else is going on in your brain, it isn't serving you. I've said this before, but I'm going to say it on every freaking podcast episode if I have to. No one has ever hated themselves into a body that they love. That just doesn't work. Feeling good and loving yourself right now, it works way better. And it's way more enjoyable. And what better time to enjoy yourself than over the holidays? And by the way, if you love 
the annual ritual of suspending all of your healthy living habits and rules and just like indulging in the big sloppy glittery mess of the holidays, then awesome. I salute you for being intentional in your choices. And I will see you in January with open arms and lots of vegetables. But if you're here at the end of November, cringing at the inevitability of being 10 pounds heavier a month from now, I invite you to remember that you can create any kind of freaking holidays you want and that you are in control of your own life. So that's the mindset piece. And if keeping a fingernail hold on your fitness during December is a priority for you, here are my top three tips to make sure that that happens. Tip number one, you have to get rid of the all or nothing mentality. Dude, you can have some eggnog. You just don't have to have it every day for a week. You can have a drink at the party. You don't have to get shit faced. <laughs> you, if you can't do your regular workout, you can still try to get your 10,000 steps in. You can eat some of that awesome cake, but you don't have to even it out in the pan until you've actually eaten half of it. Like you can let that icing be a little bit uneven on the left side and just put it back in the fridge. Okay. Seriously, if you have that, well, I've broken my diet. So fuck it. I'll fix it in January. Dude, that is your brain selling you tickets to the diet roller coaster. And I guarantee you do not want to take that ride. Okay. Tip number two is keep exercising. Exercising is the keystone habit that I prioritize over the holidays. And this is what we do in my communities. We do a program called Get Better in December. And every freaking year, my clients get measurably fitter in December and we start the year feeling so strong. So let me explain how this works. As I've mentioned before, it's not that exercising is going to burn off all the extra calories, okay? Exercising, it increases your mood. It relieves stress. It reminds you that you are a healthy motherfucker and that's what's going to happen. All right. And that what's going to make you way less likely to eat all of those extra calories in the first place. Okay. That mood enhancement, that stress relief in general is just going to make you happier over the holidays and a better person to be around. And this is why I 10 out of 10 recommend find a way to squeeze in a workout. And again, it doesn't have to be your usual hour long class. 20 minutes of solid intensity done in your home will absolutely do the trick. And if you want some follow along videos for that, send me a DM. I got you. But even just like, dude, you can't handle that. Go for a walk around the block. Remember, we're ditching the all or nothing mentality here. Every little bit counts. Okay. Final tip to keep a fingernail hold on your fitness over the holidays is it just goes back to being intentional. So I have a practice that I got from Abraham Hicks. It's called segment intentions. So I do this as part of my morning routine. I do my gratitude. I reflect on my goals and I set segment intentions. I'll look at my calendar and I'll see what I've got going on. And then I'll set an intention for how I want to feel during that segment. So I'll look and I'll be like, okay, I got a team meeting. I don't want to feel during my team meeting. I was like, oh yeah, I want to feel like a really good leader. I want to feel supported by my team. I want to feel confident. I want to feel excited about where the company is going. And then I got my workout and I want to feel, oh, I want to feel strong. I'm going to feel triumphant. I want to feel energized. And I got a date with my husband. Oh, I want to feel connected. I want to feel flirty. I want to feel a little girly. I will write that shit down because I'm telling my brain, this is the plan. This is what we're aiming for. And you might be wondering, well, why don't you just write down concrete measurable goals for each of those segments? Because you might remember from my book, it's actually the feeling that we really want. The only reason we want those goals is because of the feeling we think we're going to have when we get those goals. So really, the best thing to do is to practice by skipping directly to the feeling right now. Practice it. And not only will that make you happier, but also you'll probably be more likely to get your goals when you're in that state. Okay, so for you, as you navigate your holiday season, be intentional with how you want to feel. Before you go to the holiday office party, you could decide, I want to feel relaxed. I want to laugh a lot. I want to feel popular. I want to feel beautiful. Like You decide. And if you do that moment by moment, as you navigate your holiday season, if you take a breath and you decide how you want to feel before you dig into a holiday meal, before you ring the bell at a party, before you wake up and open presents, I guarantee that you will have a healthier and happier holiday season. So 
there you have it, lovely listener. No matter when you are listening to this, you could be, if you want, at the precipice of a new era, an era in which you can choose to repeat your previous patterns if they serve you, or you can invent a totally new reality if that's what you want. If you want to create a reality where the holidays are when you feel the most happy, healthy, and the most like yourself, that is totally possible for you. You can leverage the benefits of getting out of your routine and choose intentionally. You can get support or just solidify your identity by acting like a healthy person around your loved ones. And you can lean into the whole holiday spirit thing and take some space to get grateful, count your blessings, so that all that guilt and fitness shaming that might be happening in your head recedes to a more appropriate volume. And if staying fit over the holidays is important to you, What you got to do is you got to ditch the all or nothing mentality that is trying to convince you that you can fix it in January. You're going to keep on moving your body so that you stay upbeat and energized and solid in your identity of the healthy MF that you are. And you are going to allow yourself to do whatever you want this holiday season. Staying fit is not about deprivation. It's about being intentional with how you want to feel and then making that happen. So we are just at the outset now of the holiday season, 2023. But my wish for you is that you feel light and bright and gorgeous and playful and wrapped in love this holiday season. So let's make it happen, dude. Hey, dude, thanks for listening. If you like this episode, make sure you're subscribed so you can get the next one. And by the way, if you rate and review this podcast, it really helps me get found by other people who need some goals, grit and some woo-woo shit. And be sure to connect and DM me at Una Duncan on Instagram and let me know what you thought of the episode. Chat soon.